All right, guys, we are back in my garage for another video, and it's starting to get cold here. Winter is coming. You can see my 440 is on life support because I won't be driving it for the next several months. But with all that in mind, I figured this was the season to talk about cooling upgrades. Now, several years ago, I posted a video where I installed a CSF heat exchanger on my 440i. And now that I've got my 340i as well, I haven't really noticed any IAT issues with street driving. But I did notice that when I was at the track this summer, I was experiencing the effects of heat soak. So I reached out to CSF and they agreed to partner with me on my build so that we could make some upgrades to avoid those issues when I go into next season. So in this video, we'll be installing another CSF heat exchanger. I do honestly believe that this is the best heat exchanger upgrade on the market for our cars for several different reasons. It has a lot of unique features that you won't find on any of the other options out there. So in this video, I'll show you guys how it installs on my car. We'll go over a couple of those details so you know what makes CSF heat exchangers different. And I'll also highlight some of the things that I wasn't able to show you on my 440i, particularly how it installs with the track package transmission cooler in front of the car. So we'll go ahead and hop over to get this installed and hopefully you guys find this video useful. Now, as always, for everybody that's new to the channel, I create these videos to help keep you updated on the latest developments in our community, as well as discuss technical topics so that we have a better understanding of how our engines work. So if you're interested in more videos like that, be sure to subscribe because there will be a lot more coming out in the future. So a couple weeks ago, I posted a DIY on how to install the rock guards on our stock heat exchanger. So I'm going to kind of skip through some of this disassembly stuff. If you guys are interested in seeing it, definitely check out that DIY. I've also posted a DIY already showing how you can install this heat exchanger without removing the bumper. But this part is easier, especially if you have the track package cooler up front. This will make it easier to mount all of those brackets and things like that. So that's why I did it differently this time. But feel free to look at both DIYs to determine which direction you want to go. And then we'll go ahead and hop into the part for actually installing the heat exchanger. So under the car, we're going to remove the belly pan. It has a bunch of 8mm screws scattered all around. So remove all of those so that you can get the belly pan out of the way. And then we are going to disconnect the coolant hoses that are attached onto the heat exchanger. In order to drain the coolant, you actually want to remove the one on the passenger side because it's lower. But I'm going to show you guys how to disconnect it on the driver's side since it's easier to see from here. So there's this little metal clip that is going through it. It's kind of hard to see, but basically you want to use a little hook pick and pull that clip down and that will release the coolant hose from the heat exchanger. So at that point you can just pull it out and then the heat exchanger drops down through the bottom and then you can pull that out from behind the transmission cooler. And just a reminder that it's still going to have a lot of coolant inside of the heat exchanger. So make sure you keep your bucket underneath so that you can tilt it up and drain the rest of the fluid. And here's how I got the actual heat exchanger. Again, I showed this in my last DIY, but it's packaged very well. All of the components are included inside of the box. There are small baggies for like the hardware and stuff. And then they put really good foam pack around it so that it doesn't get damaged. And it has this plastic cover over the fins so that, you know, you don't bend any of the fins or anything like that. So it looks pretty cool. I went with the aluminum finish. Not something I'd normally go with, but I wanted to try something different for this build. So like I said, I already have the CSF heat exchanger on my 440i. And I went with the same one on my 340i for a couple different reasons. One big one is the rock guard. And this mounts right in front and it is a protective grating that will take a beating from all the rocks and things that hit your heat exchanger without actually damaging any of the fins or anything internally. So that's a huge issue we've seen with the stock heat exchanger. And of course, if I'm going to pay for an aftermarket one, I want to make sure that it's protected as well. So getting one with a rock guard, I think, is really important. Also, it comes with this extra hardware, including this bracket, and this bracket will mount up and hold the transmission cooler in place so that when you relocate it with this aftermarket heat exchanger, it still fits, it's still supported, and everything still works just like OEM. So it actually mounts 
onto the side, you screw it in, and then one of the transmission cooler lines mounts on there, and that holds it in place. So, again, another thing that, you know, you don't always see considered with these aftermarket solutions. And then another one is the end tank design, where you can see it's tapered. It's not just a straight fitting, and this helps alleviate issues with bleeding, which again, we've seen a lot of issues with on the B58. These cars are a little bit sensitive since the intake manifold is the highest point of the system, not the actual you know coolant reservoir. So it can be a little more difficult to bleed and anything like that is helpful, especially since it matches the OEM design. If you look at the OEM end tanks, they look the exact same. So that's kind of the strategy they went with designing this. Again, it's not just the same as all the other heat exchangers. I feel like this one really went through the extra step to get the R&D right, you know, make sure you're addressing common issues for B58 cars and make an upgrade where if you're at least going to upgrade it, like in my case, I'm tracking the car and I need the most consistent temps possible. You want a heat exchanger that considers all of those things. So let's go ahead and get it installed. So here we're just going to put the rock guard in place first. It installs really simply. There are four screws and you can see the four holes around the perimeter of the rock guard. So you're just going to put a screw through each of those holes. And then we'll go ahead and slide the heat exchanger back up into position the same way that we remove the stock heat exchanger. Keep in mind that it won't just sit in place without the rails on each side. So what I found is easier is to kind of snap in the coolant hoses on each side and that will help hold it in place while you get everything else situated. So to snap in each of the coolant lines, all you need to do is push that C-clip back on. And then when you push the line on, you can kind of see it just kind of slides into place and then the C-clip will snap and lock it in. So you won't need to do anything extra. Just pull it back on and you'll hear it snap into place. Then we're going to set up the track pack cooler. And again, this is one of the big optimizations that CSF made with their heat exchanger package. So you can see on one side, the bracket holds the transmission cooler line. And then we're going to screw that into one side of the heat exchanger. And then on the other side, we have this bracket that's basically going to replace the clip on the rail you can see where it used to snap in place before now we're going to replace it with a screw so you put a screw through that bracket and that will be how you support the other side of your transmission cooler so a nice kind of OEM plus style retrofit solution to keep it in the same location the only downside is this whole heat exchanger does push the transmission cooler forward so we're going to need to trim one side of the radiator shrouds this bracket normally fits right around where the transmission cooler lines come out so we're going to cut this out to add a little bit of clearance and once we have it all reinstalled you can kind of see how the transmission cooler line bracket can still snap in place but it just gives it the extra room for the lines to extend past where the shroud was originally covering it up and if you take a step back you can see how everything looks reinstalled again a nice kind of OEM plus fit with the bumper reinstalled you don't actually see the CSF logo as prominently but you know it still looks really nice behind the front end of the car and then at this point we'll just reassemble everything with our bumper so that you know it goes back to that OEM look but again, you know, there are two different ways you can install this. If you guys want to, you can check out my previous DIY to show you how to install this without removing the bumper at all. But at the end of the day, I think it's hard to beat the CSF solution if you need to mitigate heat soak issues. So yeah, I think that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching and I hope this helps. And if you have any other questions or comments, leave them down below.